Friday, Friday, yesterday was Thursday, tomorrow is Saturday, fun, fun, yeah! You were, I don't think I want to hop onto that bandwagon and talk about that video, but but maybe I like it. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com, here with another raw edit of the week. And what a really, really cool file that came out of a D5000. Uh, it's just a really cool scene. Love the ocean, love the way that this looks. Um, and let's see what we can edit it, or let's see what I can do with it before I send it over to Greg to see what he can do. But let's see, where was it shot, or how was it shot? Nikon D5000, 1 50th of a second at 3.5, ISO 18, 18, ISO 800, 18 to 200 millimeters lens shot at 18. So, yeah, probably had VR on on that lens if it is, is the version 2. 800 ISO, not terribly too bad in this camera. Um, yeah, I mean, the ocean looks great. I mean, the waves look great. The colors are going to look cool once we start tweaking them. Not much to say about the setting. Um, it was probably shot on, what, what would you assume, aperture priority or something along those lines? I don't even know where that information is right now, but it's, it's cool. So how would I edit this? Would I go black and white? No, probably not. What would we do? Uh, so there you see I'm hitting up the exposure a little bit. Then I go with the contrast, of course, because I like contrast. Let's pup, put up the vibrance. <coughs> Excuse me. And make it look a little more... Yeah, a little different. A again, this is probably one of those images... Um, this is going back where HDR people would have a field day because it looks glowy and like a painting... That's cool if you like doing that. Again, people always ask, Jared, do you do HDR? I personally do not do HDR. Um, that's just me. Some people like it. I'm going to add some more yellow. because See how it's a little too blue now that I pumped up, pumped up the vibrance? I want to make it a little more yellow. Not too much, but now it looks a little more warm. But I still get the feel that it's the end of the day. The water looks cold. And I still feel like it's not an uber-duber warm place. Too much magenta, too much cyan. There we go. Right about there. Some clarity. Uh, I got to hit the contrast a little more. What's Mr. Phil Light do today? Well, we know that it's sundown, so... Oh, there it is. No. No, 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 no. Um, all right, so let's try to bring the sky back by using... Is this the tool that I rarely touch? Yes, it is. Interesting, interesting. Interesting, interesting. Hey, you know, it's a tool that I don't touch that I am so bad at actually using it. But let's try it again, because I have to start learning this stuff. So we're gradating from the top down. Interesting, interesting. What do we think? What do we think? I'm going to go with this. I am doing it. Ooh, ooh, there goes some saturation into the sky. A little bit of contrast. No brightness. I'm going to get rid of the brightness. So let's see. If I get rid of this thing, how do we do? No, let's leave it in there. Yeah, look at that. It, now it's looking interesting. I'm going to pull back a little bit. I like that. It was a little too dark for my liking. So now we have that. Let's go even further and let's play with some vignetting. Friday, Friday. Oh, yeah, no. We want to go into the black vignette slightly. I don't know. I, I'm still not a big vignetting fan, so I'm just going to do a smidgen here. Smidgen. You know, what other, what other fun features? Grain? Anybody want to add grain to it? Oh, yeah. No, I don't want to add grain. I'm not a big fan of adding the grain. Goodbye, grain. So, here, this is where we started, and this is using the slash button, which would probably be looking like this because the camera's backwards. That's where it started. This is where I took it. So let me give it a one once over before um, to see what other color changes I could make. Do I like the yellow? Because a lot of times I go back later and I go, ah, there's too much green. Ooh, ooh, I just added some magenta and it looks even better. 
Oh, there it is. Oh, I like it. I like it. That made me happy. A little bit of fill light? A little bit? No. No, 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 no. Just a little bit more exposure. It's where it started. That's where it goes. And I think I like it. I think I like that I added some more magenta, took out some more of the green, and made me made me happy. Greg, let's see what you got. What to do, what to do. I have no idea what to do with this file, guys. Um, staring at it for a minute or so here, and uh, first impressions, uh, it was shot with a D5000 and an 18-200 to 200 lens, uh, so it's not going to have the normal dynamic range that I'm used to, uh, and there is quite a bit of dynamic range in this image. Uh, I think the exposure is okay. Uh, at least judging by the histogram, but uh, just the dynamic range from really bright whites all the way up in here, all the way to the blacks are just going to be really uh, stretching the power of the sensor in the D5000. Um, now one thing that I definitely noticed as soon as I opened this file was the barrel distortion at 18 millimeter on this lens. So I'm going to fix that because it bothers me. Um, auto, and we're going to choose Nikon. There we go. And it automatically chooses our 18 to 200 lens. And that makes a big difference. Uh, you really see that barrel distortion right here in the middle uh, and in the skyline area. And we turn that back on and it straightens that out nicely. Now I will say that the person did shoot this night uh, very well. Uh, we have a nice uh, horizontal skyline. At least I think we do. Let's find out. Yeah, it's pretty good. Maybe we'll tweak it just a hair. But it uh, looks really good as far as holding it and composing it. I do like that. Now what else am I going to do with it? Well, I'm still not sure. Um, might play with some black and white here. And just push some stuff around. If I go up in here, it's starting to make it look a little dreamy, which is kind of cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, tone curve. Let's see what we can do with it. Bring our highlights back, maybe. It's starting to get muddy in here, though. Hmm. Let's go back a little bit. Back to our temperature setting and see blacks are really tough because this gets dark real quick real quick let's try going the other way with our clarity you know what I'm just gonna split tone this I think I think I'm just gonna split tone this and I'm gonna go into my orange I think for my highlights into the see into the the sky area and I think my shadows may be a blue color there we go that's better a little too saturated but we can work on that eh. There. Messed up. Balance. Hmm. That's okay. I think it needs a little more contrast. You know what? I like that color better. So I'm going to bring the saturation back up in my highlights. I like that. That's not too bad. I like the red. The war The... The warm color of the of the red, and then the cold color in the rocks and in the water here. I think that works. So let's try and add a little more contrast and see what happens. I don't think we want to go too far. I'm going to brighten this down just a touch. What happens when I play with clarity. I think I'm going to leave it where it was. Exposure. Same thing. Uh, just leave it there and 
see what happens. Let's come back to my white balance. No, I think it's where it should be. Same with the tint. I think I'm going to leave it where it was. And I'm guessing that's about it. I think it actually turned out well for having no idea what to do with it. Usually I can pick up an image really quickly, uh, you know, get my own feel of how the image should be very quickly, but I just didn't get a good feeling from this. And um, so, yeah, let's see how Jared and I did. All right, so here we have the two edits from this week. Very, 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 very different. Um, what were you going for in yours, Greg? Dude, I had no idea. This this is one of those images images that just didn't hit me. Yeah. You, you know how sometimes you get an image and it just hits you right away like, hey, I know I want to edit that. Well, this is one of those ones that didn't hit me and I had no idea what to do with it. So you went post optolipta blah, I can't even say it. <laughs> like... Like, the world has gone... I mean, it, it, it's interesting, because it does... It's interesting how colors that aren't normal can conjure up deep, dark, different things, right? Yeah, I would agree, and it's called split tone. It's a, it's a split tone? All right. Yep. What do you, what do you think of what I did? Uh, I like the, the blue in the water, um, but I don't like how deep the blacks are in the rocks. I'd probably lighten them up a little bit with a... <laughs> With a gradient tool or something. You know, it's funny. I didn't even look at the rocks. I just, I was worried about the sky. I put a, I put one of those gradation, gradient tools in the sky and then played with it. And then I made it bluer and up my saturation. And I didn't even think of the rocks, actually. I wasn't even looking there. I didn't even look there. I, I didn't look there until you said something. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? You know, it's funny. And the rocks don't even, I mean, they're, you can see that they're a little, uh, uh hold on. I got to zoom in here. A little bit not good. It's the lens. It's that 18 to 200 lens. Well, it's not only the lens, but it's also the dynamic range of the D5000. You know, yeah. We're used to cameras with a much higher dynamic sure. range that this camera just de definitely cannot capture this far of a range. But it still did a great job with... Um, I mean, I was able to pull out some great color, I think, from the photo that I did. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Both of them would definitely work, uh, but we're we're just used to a little bit more range and a little more everything in our file. So I think that's kind of what I talked about in my video. Mm -hmm. There was a little, just a that another camera might have done a little bit better with another sensor, but you really never know until you put one side by side. Right, and you again, you shoot with what you got, and there's nothing wrong with it. Exactly. I guess you didn't notice that I got rid of the barrel distortion from that lens either, did you? All I can see is that my head is, is like, hurting right now anyway, but it, it keeps feeling like the edges are bowing in. I don't know. It's like from the side of my eye, it looks like everything's going... It, just, it could just be my head, my brain right now. In yours? Uh, your file's doing that or in mine? It, it's the whole world right now is bending, Greg. It's, I think it's just my head is pounding, and that's what's going on. <laughs> well, I uh, the first thing I saw when I opened it, uh, besides the fact that I didn't know what to do with it, was the barrel distortion from that lens right in the middle. And Ooh. so I used the automatic corrections in there and removed it. I, I don't even know. I mean, I guess I'm looking at them side by side. I don't know. I tried the barrel distortion thing, not on this, but in other stuff just on my own, and I was just like, eh. Not a big deal. It's not something that you would notice. But what is interesting about this photo, this again could be another HDR person's dream, right? Yes, I would agree. It could definitely be an interesting one for if uh, you're into that kind of thing. Yeah, and that's what I said in my video. It's, it's one of those things that if you're into it, this is one of those files that's going to give you a lot of leeway to, to make it look more like an art piece because it's not people. And people, I don't think, work well in HDR, but... This photo could work, interestingly, in HDR, and obviously we're giving you guys the opportunity for this is the 19th week, so go ahead and download this raw file and throw your edits into it and post it in the Fronos Photo Forum, but also don't be afraid to put it up on the Fronos Photo fan page uh, on, on Facebook. Feel free to do both. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, what do you think? Anything else, Greg? No, I think that's it. We will uh, see what happens for next week. I think I lost this round, but uh, 
something different. Yeah, it's something different. It's it's like a rubber stamp of a couple colors. And it's it's different. It could be like a vintagey look or a post apocalyptica. Apocalyptica. <laughs> if you say so. Apocalyptica. Jeez, I can't even That's a band, I think. I don't know. But anyway, I've cleaned out a lot of the trash that was in the fro nose photo at gmail.com because that box got filled. I haven't been delete. I didn't realize that Gmail didn't delete all the old files. So I went ahead and did so. So that box is back open for you to send in your raw files. Uh, why don't I ask for submissions for something, Greg? Why don't, why don't I ask for a certain type of raw file? That sounds good. What do you have in mind? Um... I don't. I didn't have much in mind. I always have women on my mind. I would love to see more, you know, girls in video in photos. But why don't we go? That's always a good thing. Yeah, that is a good thing. Why don't we go with uh, automobiles? Or that sounds like a good one. Powered objects, uh, people movers, trains, planes, trains, planes, automobiles. Yep, or maybe even tools might be a fun one along that same genre. Well, we'll we'll do that in the future. We'll do like a garage thing. So why don't we do trains, planes, and automobiles? Sounds good. Let's see what happens. All right, guys. Trains, planes, and automobiles. Start sending in some of those. Maybe we'll pick out some of those for raw file edits. But, Greg, thank you. And see you next week. Yeah, and we're going to get to go uh, to next week, and I'm going to go to sleep. Jared Poland. Fro knows photo dot com. Say ya. Yeah.